Meet the Skedaddler, a nimble squirrel-like enemy that's native to the vibrant Flower Kingdom. He's quite the panicky type as he breaks into a brisk sprint at the sight of Mario and friends and can be found in Pipe Rock Plateau, the opening world of Super Mario Bros. Wonder. But did you know in Japan they named this creature Zurakaru? That word means to flee and they've kept this naming convention for the enemy for all the localizations. Introducing one of the many interesting new adversaries showcased in Super Mario Bros. Wonder. I'm the Mentok, and because why not, I decided to whip up yet another unnecessary list of all the new enemies in this game. All right, buckle up, because this list isn't just the usual suspects from Bowser's army. We already tackled that. This time, we start our journey in the Flower Kingdom's Pipe Rock Plateau, the first of six worlds where Mario and his friends will see all kinds of new wildlife. But as an exception, let's kick things off with Goombas. Sure, they might look familiar, but this time, there's a twist. They bite. The developers of Wonder brought this animation into the game since they heard from Miyamoto himself that Goombas biting was originally intended for the first Super Mario Bros. game. Now, we're able to show those expressions. That Goomba looks so sorry. Well then. Koopas would also get a slight makeover for this title with the introduction of the Rolla Koopa. They now have a new method of transportation at their disposal, allowing them to move at faster speeds and jump between platforms roll-bound style. This is a pretty simple upgrade to regular Koopa Troopas, giving them a magenta shell to match their skates. The concept art even teases us with variations, from helmet-clad Koopas to patriotic ones donning bandanas with an American flag on the back of their shell. Perhaps that one is a little too on the nose for the final game, but hey, it's always nice to take a peek into the design process a little bit. Remember the caped Koopas in Super Mario World? Well, this time around, the developers of Wonder brainstormed on how to add yet another evolution to this well-known enemy, and the designer came up with skates. Personally, I find the Cape Koopas to be more interesting, but this was a cool inclusion nonetheless. Shovas are our newest member of the Koopa species. Push a pee. Oh, push a pee. These are large Koopa enemies that seem like a fusion between Hammer Bros and Sumo Bros. Known as Oshidashi in Japan, meaning to push something out, these Koopas are mainly here to try and shove pipes to ultimately squeeze Mario between a rock and a hard place. This enemy was probably put in the game to telegraph the new mechanic of pushing pipes, because the player can, in fact, have a pushing war with this enemy. Try this with elephant power up and watch these shovas buckle into your superior power. The French name for this thing is the best. Pusumo, a combination of pussy, <coughs> oh shit, meaning to push, and sumo. As a side note, if you pre-ordered Super Mario Bros. Wonder, you were supposed to get a set of trading cards along with the game, and some asshole on eBay is already selling Elephant Mario for over four grand. Either way, these trading cards have some short bios on them that I'll refer to from time to time. Like right now. Bull Rush. This rowdy enemy charges as soon as he sees Mario or his friends, but it's not great at stopping. Bull Rushes seem like a mixture of a dinosaur and bison and take center stage by stampeding during the wonder effect in a few different levels. In Japan, they call it Koshin, translating to charge. Interestingly enough, Europe went all in on the Triceratops half of this enemy, with the French naming it Corceratops, the Germans calling it Galopteros, and the Italians pointing out both species with the name Biceratopo. Next among the Pipe Rock Plateau fauna are the Hoppos, purple hippo-like creatures that look like they were born suffering. In Japanese, they're known as Koronporin, the combination of Korokoro, the onomatopoeia for rolling, and Toranporin, the word for trampoline. If the player stomps on their bloated bodies, it will push the Hoppo, causing them to roll. Utilize them correctly and you can get them stuck in gaps for a more stabilized jump boost. What a sad existence. By the way, shout out to all the Nintendo localization teams for their clever naming. Even though these are all different languages, they somehow preserve the puns most of the time, which is fantastic. Speaking of clever names, these are snails. And their larger form, big snails. It's a sin that Nintendo didn't give them their own trading card. Wow, many creepy crawlies. In the level of Sproings in the Twilight Forest, Mario and the gang will meet Sproings. These acorn-like enemies have vines that burst out of them if the player gets close. Bion is their Japanese name, stemming from the word to describe a bouncing sound. I love the Chinese version of this one though. Sensual Guai, or a stretching monster. And of course, there are a couple of lesser enemies in this world like the Smogrin and Erins, named after the Eringi Mushroom. Where I'm getting these names is a mixture of what was revealed in the initial Super Mario Bros. Wonder Nintendo Direct, the trading cards, and internal names from the game's development data. At the time of this video, this game is still pretty new, but I think this information will probably remain the same unless some journalist decides to corner Nintendo reps to ask these questions at future conventions. And one day that person will be me. Piranha Plants now have a new trick up their sleeve, climbing out of their pipes to hunt down the player. Talking plants, huh? Oh 
almost as weird as talking plants. This is a Trotten piranha plant, a brand new species also introduced in the flower kingdom. Although it looks pretty much like a small version of Petey piranha. This species is named Ranran Pakun in Japan, the first part meaning run run, and Pakun being a portmanteau of the expression Pakun Cho, meaning eating in one bite. But what makes these things unforgettable is the fact that the wonder flower seems to have them break out into song. Technically, this isn't the first time we've seen piranha plants sing. Mario continues his journey into the Petal Isles. This area is an in-between to the worlds, and this is where we'll start to see some of the more aquatic species of the Flower Kingdom, like Chin Anago. Not much to say about this one aside from it resembling a nudie branch or a sea cucumber. They pop out of warp pipes and serve as an obstacle to swim around. But they actually have two different names in the internal files for this game. The first being Chin Anago, a name used to describe a spotted garden eel, even though they look nothing alike. And the other name is Octopus Foot. So maybe one of the devs thought this was the end of a giant octopus tentacle or something? Kinda terrifying to think about. So jumping in here to mention that new information dropped while I was editing, a Japanese strategy guide released for Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and it gave this particular enemy an official name. Chiumiu is the name, an anagram of umiushi, which means sea slug. So if they're starting to name these within the strategy guides, I'm gonna assume there's gonna be English official names for these enemies at some point in time. I guess we'll see, but back to the video. Smackerels! Even though they're flounders, this fish can be found in only one level, known as Leaping Smackerel. They hide in the sand before jumping out to eat Mario and his friends. And like the bull rush, the wonder effect for this level puts Smackerel in the spotlight, spawning a giant version of this fish that may initially be intimidating. Still, all you have to do is time your swimming and he'll dislodge some goodies for you trapped in the sand. In Japan, they go by the name Haiden, which could be derived from the Chinese word Haiji, meaning seabed. Then they're the robbers. Just as their name suggests, they will swoop down at you and try to relieve you of your coins. The Japanese name is Yokodori, which can roughly mean snatching bird. But interestingly, the internal files call it Kawasemi, meaning Kingfisher, the bird it's based on. Uminoko also lurks in the Petal Isles, and at first glance, it looks like a pig mixed with a turtle, at least to me. But these are based on softshell turtles with longer snouts. Now, if this thing could be considered a species of Koopa, this is probably the most far removed one we've seen thus far aside from maybe Bowser and Bowser Jr. So Uminoko uses the Japanese word for sea, umi as the prefix, and noko from the Koopa name, which leads me to believe this is indeed a new type of Koopa. Welcome to the family stone. So this one also got an updated name in the Japanese guide, and it's called supoko, from the word supon, meaning soft shell turtle, and ko, which is a suffix for child. Based on all this information, is this really a Koopa? What do you guys think? Bluebirds are birds that will use their beak as a blow dart. Once this beak hits the wall, it extends into a pole that the player can use to jump onto. The official Japanese name is Fukian, a combination of Fukia, the word for blowgun, and Yan, a suffix that equates to dude in English. Did you all notice the shell on its back? Do you think this is a species of Koopa? Or a distant Yoshi relative? Okay, I'm just stirring the pot now. Konk! I'm gonna smash. Someone we can add to the family of Thwomps. If you all saw my last Unnecessary List video, you understand that the Thwomp species is quite complex. But Kongs are similar to Thwomps, mechanic-wise. Yellow Kongs drop downwards, and blue will attack from below. And their faces seem to have conveniently evolved into arrows telegraphing which way they will drop. Funny enough, the French and Italians named this one Bomp. But that name already belongs to an enemy already established in the Mario universe. Look at this sad, forgotten face. I'm sorry, Bomp. Noshers! Possibly from the Chomp family? These things are a little on the disturbing side because during the wonder effect, they will flood the screen, eating everything that stands in their way. That unapologetic face will not hesitate to take a bite out of you. Mamas appear in the level Mama Mouthful, an enemy that resembles some kind of amphibian or salamander. And much like the Nosher, they will eat everything including your power-ups, which got them the name Anguri in Japan, the word for opened mouth, which could also be a pun on the words angry or hungry. <laughs> But finally, after being attacked by all of these vicious creatures, Mario and his friends have reached the second world in the Flower Kingdom, Fluff Puff Peaks. Aw oh man, this place looks so peaceful. What could possibly- Get the f out of my way! So out my ways look kind of like ninjas to me. The Mario Wiki describes them as being similar to Goombas, which I can also kind of see. But they seem to be wearing a cat mask with goggles and boots that they use to kick things out of their way, hence their name. 
In Japan, they named this little guy Zundoko, which the wiki cites as a meaningless term used in the Japanese song Zundoko Bushi, a song that dates all the way back to 1937, popular among Japanese marines right around the time of the Second Sino-Japanese War. And other sources say that the meaning of Zundoko is unknown, but the best guess is that the word is meant to simulate the sound of soldiers' boots while marching. This could certainly be applied to our friend out my way here, so I'm gonna say that was Nintendo's intention. Other languages went with whatever expression worked best for kicking shit out the way, making this one of the most interesting new enemies for me on this list. Pokepeds are these caterpillar-type enemies that seem completely blind and throw punches at anything in front of them. Equipped with boxing gloves and helmets all down their body, this enemy seems to be a type of wiggler, though this isn't exactly confirmed. Hebimushi, meaning snake insect is their Japanese name, which I find interesting because neither the English nor Japanese versions of the name reference punching at all. This is off topic, but the German name for this is Tausendschlanger, meaning a thousand snakes. And it blew my mind that the German word for snake, Schlinger, is where we got the vulgar word for genitalia, Schlang. Are you good, bro? Like, <laughs> I'm learning a ton of things about linguistics today. This is great. Get bored watching this. Condart seems like a variant of the bluebird, but unlike the bluebird who can shoot its own beak, the condart will just try to stab you itself. It's not the only condor in the flower kingdom though, there's also the pakandoru, a condor with shades and a plunger for feet. Okay, some of these enemies are a little phoned in, so let's keep it moving. Melon piranha plant. I found this one to be so clever for some reason. The design just fits the piranha plants so well. These obviously are variants of the piranha plants that look like watermelons and spit seeds at the player that can be used to get a jump boost. If you've played the final final level of this game, you know how infuriating timing this is. Next up is the Lakitu Trio. This isn't necessarily a new enemy, but it looks like the Lakitus came up with the idea to fuse their clouds together. Hey yo! They aren't necessarily bad though, because during the wonder effect, they have a change of heart and decide to throw goodies at the player instead of spikes. Super Mario Bros. Wonder also has the traditional Bowser airship levels within the game that we've seen in 2D Mario titles since Super Mario Bros. 3. And there are a couple of new enemies here we should take a look at as well. This is Hanabihe. So this thing doesn't seem to have an official English name yet, but it definitely is a new species of Babam. Hanabihe can translate to Firework Soldier, similar to the Japanese name for Babams, Bomuhe. So here's a challenge for my viewers right now. In the comments, I want to see what you would decide to name this thing if you were part of Nintendo of America's localization team. This is another enemy I really liked in this game because once the player stomps on it, you can pick it up and use it to launch a set of fireworks above you, taking out enemies or breaking blocks in the process. Now the Bowser generator serves as the boss for the airship levels, which was a waste as a boss, but let me leave my opinions out of this. All you have to do is hit that big red button at the top, What does this button do? And it blows up. Hooray. World 3 is the Shining Falls, where Mario will undergo trials that will prove his worthiness for this area's royal seed. One enemy that can be found here is the Hoppy Cat, another one of my favorites. The Hoppy Cat will jump whenever Mario and the gang jumps, which makes getting past this thing a little tricky, especially when you're rushing through the level. But you can also use this to your advantage using their copy ability to hit blocks for you. I looked at the 3D model of this thing and the teeth and large gaping mouth underneath are a little unsettling. No, this isn't a misspelling of angelfish, it's anglefish, one of the aquatic species that Mario will discover in the Flower Kingdom. This name is self-explanatory because, you know, it's a triangle. And if that didn't land the pun for you, yes, their attack patterns are also at an angle. Strangely enough, the Japanese name for this fish is Amy, a pun on the word aiming, but also sounds like the name Amy. I've also made a video about her too if you want to check it out. I think that was like the biggest stretch of a plug I've made on this channel so far. Takebos, an enemy that is pretty much a reskin of stacked Goombas. I don't think they're related to Goombas, but when tacked together, they resemble a stalk of bamboo. The name Takebo comes from the Japanese word for bamboo, take, with the suffix bo used for boys. There are a couple of variants of Takebos in the game, like this metallic one that can be electrically charged, so just skip over this one if you run into it. Sugar stars aren't the most interesting enemies in the game, but they serve as obstacles that fly around in a circular pattern and are especially annoying in the final final level. I bring them up because the Japanese name for them, Kompe, is based off a type of candy called Kompeito, which seems to be what Star Bits from Super Mario Galaxy was based on, which gives feeding Lumas these things a whole new context for me, my mind is blown. Now we've reached World 4, yet another desert world for Mario to explore, and one of the first enemies we'll encounter in these dunes is the Armad. 
Named after armadillos, these enemies will basically spin dash at the player. But enough about them. Damn. Let's get to one of my favorite enemies in this world, the Mumsy. This one is self-explanatory, but it was so satisfying jumping behind this thing and unraveling it. It made me want to continue hunting down and destroying these mummies, even if they weren't in my way. In Japan, the name doesn't reference a mummy at all though, instead calling them Maki Maki, deriving from the word Maki, meaning rolling up a sheet or paper. Blooms also debut in this vast desert a fish out of water type enemy that also Help looks like me. it's in complete agony. These things can't even damage the player, but for the level blooms of the desert skies, blooms are everywhere, raining from the sky, being launched at you, and during the wonder effect, impeding your path to the wonder seed. The team at Nintendo named this one Busuke, which the Mario wiki suggests comes from a piece of the word Fusen for balloon and Ske which is a common ending for names of Japanese males. It's strange though, because the internal files for the game labeled this thing Killer Balloon or Balloon Killer. Killer or Akira is the Japanese name for bullet bills, and if you look carefully, blooms are being formed and blasted out of these cannons that heavily resemble the bill blasters that launch bullet bills. It's subtle, but blooms seem to be a distant relative to the bullet bill family. Also lurking in the deepest depths of this desert is an entity known as Dark Mario. Exclusive to the wonder effect in both Color Switch Dungeon in World 4 and Beware of the Rifts in World 5, Dark Mario is an extremely aggressive enemy that will chase down <laughs> Mario and friends just to utterly destroy them. We've seen this idea played around with before with Cosmic Mario in the Super Mario Galaxy games and Super Mario 3D Land but most of those encounters are just races to the end of the level. This apparition is out for Mario's throat. What's up, baby? Take me out the dinner. And finally vanishes when the player grabs the Wonder Seed. I didn't know this until doing my research, but you can actually kill Dark Mario if you hit it with 50 fireballs. But nobody has time for that, just outrun him, bruv. I tested this out myself, by the way. I know this is World 5, but the Japanese name of the level Beware of the Rifts can be literally translated to Don't touch it, it's dangerous. A black shadow approaches. So while the internal files label this entity as Mario Dark and Kage Mario, meaning Shadow Mario, the level title is a little bit more subtle, calling him a looming black shadow instead. I find it interesting that one, Dark Mario only appears during the wonder effect, and two, it doesn't matter what character you pick, the entity is always Mario. So this has me question what the wonder effect is precisely. Could the Wonder Flower be manifesting an exaggerated version of the user's surroundings? Or is this a psychedelic trip that the flower has the potential to make a reality? Either way, Mario may have some internal demons that he needs to sort out here. Subochan is the last enemy from World 4, a purple snake with a Winnie the Pooh honeypot on its head. And though it lacks an English name, Nintendo could do a very funny thing and name it Pothead. But doesn't this remind you of the Rex enemies that debuted in Super Mario World? It's been a while since we've seen those things. So now that Mario and the gang have cleared all the sand out of their shoes, they move on to World 5, the Fungi Mines. In their journey to save a team of poplins that are stuck deep within the mines, the player will also counter some new enemies here. The first is Tailey, and these things are a lot of fun to interact with. It's an enemy based on a pitcher plant with a vine that hangs down for the player to use to swing ahead. Grabbing a Tailey has this satisfying and responsive snap that will launch the player forward and annihilate the Tailey in the process. This enemy is very simple, yet effective. The Boos have set up shop in the Flower Kingdom as well, in a level called Light Switch Mansion. And while King Boo makes his first appearance as an enemy in a 2D Mario title here, I'll draw our attention to a brand new addition to the Boo House. Moving Door. I'm sure this may have left an impression on some players. As you attempt to find your way out of the mansion, these enemies disguise themselves as warp doors, but if the player gets near, it will start screaming and ambush them. This thing can even jump, but if you manage to stun it, the moving door can be utilized as a legitimate warp door. So do you guys think this enemy will serve as the new Mario 64 piano for the next generation? Next is the Dark Koopa Troopa. Technically this enemy still needs an official English name, but I'm going to assume it's that since it's Dark Noko Noko in Japan. Appearing in Beware of the Rifts alongside Dark Mario, these Koopas are also dangerous to interact with and cannot be stomped on. Could not stomp Koopas! I'm sorry, Chris Pratt. And though the final model of this enemy is a dark Koopa with red eyes, there is an unused version of this model with sunglasses. So I guess this one wasn't intimidating enough for the final cut. Wubbas are these fascinating slime creatures that I feel the dev team implemented to flex the liquid physics of their new engine. They're mostly found in the Wubba Ruins level within the Fungi Mines, and this area is covered with goo and slime, something the Wubbas can seamlessly slip through if need be. 
During the Wonder Effect, Mario and his friends can fully transform into Wubbas, which allow them to do cool shit like stick to walls and ceilings. How, uh, how's the goo taste? Then there are the Slidons, another new member of the Thwomp family, depicted as a baby with a pacifier. This Thwomp-like enemy will damage the player when the ruins tilt from side to side, and they also come in different sizes. So here's my theory. All members of the Thwomp family are born as Slidons, and then slowly evolve into other things like Conks, Bomps, and Womps. Don't take that theory too seriously. But this is one of the few enemies in the game that have the same name in Japanese. You'd interpret the name in English as a play on the word Slidon, but in Japanese, it combines the words Slide and Don, the onomatopoeia for colliding sounds. Cool, right? So after we've saved these poplins, we finally reach World 6, the Deep Magma Bog. A vast catacombs of caves, fire, and liquid hot magma. Roomba is an enemy you'll encounter down here, and it seems to be a bee with a rock shell wrapped around it. It's a minor inconvenience within these levels and can be dispatched quickly, but the exciting part comes from its name. It seems to be a combination of Rumble and Goomba, which suggests that this is a form of Goomba? But it's not just the English name that did this. The Chinese, German, Italian, and Korean localizations of the name all incorporated Goomba into it somehow. But I also turned to the Japanese name for this, Gorobo, a combination of the sound for rolling and Bo, which is a suffix for guy. If you guys remember from my previous list, Goombas are known as Karibo in Japan, so the naming here would be a reference to that. The same goes for Takebos as well. Either way, I'd leave this enemy off the Goomba list until we get further confirmation. RARS! A new set of fire enemies in Wonder only appearing in the levels RARS and the Ruins. These fiery creatures are related to lava enemies we've seen in previous Mario titles like the Blarg and the Magmarg. These creatures are named after a groaning or roaring sound in both English and Japanese. Blargs would be known as Unbaba, the Un part referencing a groaning sound, and Baba meaning hag, which probably refers to their witch-like face. So the Rars here were named Uran, with Ron being a reference to Long, the Chinese word for dragon. Most languages reference a dragon in the name, but here's a shout out to the Portuguese for keeping it a buck and calling this thing Leomarg, because it does look more like a lion to me. Then there are these things, Morocons which must have been included just because someone is eating popcorn at the office one day. Sentient popcorn is a fun idea though. Revers are a new type of dry bones enemy. It's a dog-like creature with a leash that the player can grab and pull, launching the enemy forward when they let go, hence the name. Now based on their name, it seems we've mostly agreed that this is a dog, but in Japan it's called Chorochu, the chu part using to reference a mouse squeaking. No matter how much I look at this thing, I can't see a mouse, but it wasn't just a Japanese name. The Chinese, German, and Korean translations all reference a mouse in there. Maybe the leash is meant to resemble a rat tail? I never get bored watching this. Now before I get to the final set of enemies, I did miss a few minor ones. Hohos, Snoodles, Cloud Piranhas, Expert, Fire Spike, Jump Toge, Hot Hot Rock, Mera Mera, Rumble, and Mecha Koopa Mark II. Apologies to anyone who had a favorite in that list. I can't believe this! So with all the royal seeds, Mario and friends can approach Castle Bowser for the final confrontation. On the pathway, there are a few new enemies under Bowser's employ. Missile Meg, which has one of my favorite names in the game, are these really long versions of Bullet Bills. Huge shout out to whoever came up with that name, because it's spectacular. They appear in Missile Meg Mayhem, and as they fly toward the player, they can use them as platforms to progress. As I mentioned earlier, bullet bill enemies are known as kiras or killers in Japanese. So with that in mind, what was the awesome name they cooked up for this enemy over there? That's a little disappointing, but the other localization teams knew the assignment. The Dutch and French went with Missile Mark, the Portuguese, Ballistic Bill. The Spanish chose Missile Milo, and finally the Russian team? Rocket Ricky. Missile Megs aren't the only new type to join the bullet bill family. There's also the Seeker Bullet Bill, no cute names this time, and the Join Killer, which is a segmented bullseye build that will home in on the player. But the Join Killer doesn't seem to have any localized names, so I guess this is another one we'll have to wait for. So before we get to Bowser himself, I suppose it's worth mentioning Bowser Jr. in this game. He serves as an occasional boss throughout the worlds of the Flower Kingdom, but while he's on the ropes during his fights, Bowser will lend him his wonder power. Personally, I really like the design of this form, even though the fights are a bit lackluster. His hair bursts into a green flame, his bandana seemingly turns into a real mouth, and he has this menacing aura that I think as a transformation should stick around for a few more games. But in this form, Bowser Jr. is able to manipulate the stage around him, giving the player a little bit more of a challenge in landing the last few hits. 
But this brings me to the last new enemy in this game, Note Piranha Plant. Okay, technically these are just projectiles in the final battle with Bowser. The last boss fight with Bowser is a blast to experience since it's structured as a whole rock concert and incorporates music and rhythm and all these other things. As I mentioned in my review of this game, this is one of the best 2D Mario final fights out there. And throughout the battle, Bowser will summon these Note Piranha Plants, which the player must avoid during the battle. But endure these barrages while timing your jumps properly, and Mario will emerge victorious, returning peace to the Flower Kingdom once more. And we all lived happily ever after. Maybe we'll see some of these new species again in future games, and personally, I hope we return to the Flower Kingdom once more with DLC or a sequel. A happy 2024 to you all. Thank you all for all the support in 2023. And as always, be safe. The Prophet has spoken. Come back again sometime, yeah?